story continues in Sydney. This is the round, the volley of gunshots that we heard 30 minutes ago. Just have a quick listen to this. So that trails for about 45, maybe 50 seconds. But right before that moment, we saw this and at well, least so five hostages running for their lives. Structure that the um, Australian police and others have, have put So that in was place on Sky News. We watched it together. I want to bring in Congressman Peter King to try and piece together a little bit of uh, Martha's conversation with Steve Emerson right before the break here. And, sir, good morning to you. Uh, you, you know you there have been threats in Australia. We don't know if this Iranian had a connection to ISIS, but we do know he has a history of contacting families uh, in Australia with these threatening letters. And I'm just curious from your perspective. You, you see what Australia did there, and we believe in the end this has been resolved where only the gunman uh, needs to be accounted for. And we, we hope and certainly, well, we pray, frankly, that the hostages are all okay. But we have not gi been given that word just yet. How then is Australia now trying to manage what could potentially be uh, uh, the threat of a lone wolf when you're trying to keep the, uh, the, the public calm in a country where you've already passed laws where if you go and join this fight in Iraq and Syria, we're going to keep an eye on you, and we're going to try and prevent you from coming back in this country. Yeah, well, first let me say that the counterterrorism units and the commando forces in Australia are terrific, and they're among our closest allies in the world. But what we saw today, though, is the changing face of terrorism and the new threat from terrorism, and that it does not necessarily have to come from a card-carrying member or an official member of ISIS or any of the other al-Qaeda-type organizations. Uh, it can be a sympathizer, it can be a fanatic, it can be someone on the edge. Uh, we've seen that in Canada, we've seen that in New York, where the uh, uh, deranged person with a, uh, an axe attacked a police officer in, in Queens. And, but they were inspired by what they hear from ISIS. And that's really, if, if uh, I, I'd be willing to say here that it's this climate created by ISIS, which is, is new. It's appealing to people, not just to our members, but people on the edge and on the periphery. And it's a real challenge to police and law enforcement, because there has to be, I think, intense scrutiny, intense surveillance, and uh, looking for any possible indicators of someone who could act like this. And even then, it's going to be tough, but it shows to me the need for increased surveillance, heavy surveillance, and to get as many sources as we can into these communities where these type of uh, lunatics may come from. And not just lunatics, people who are on the edge and who have these Islamist leanings. As you were talking, the police gave the word out that the siege is over. Um, just reading it from the Associated Press, police say Sydney Cafe hostage situation is over after more than, more than 16 hours. Now we await the fallout. How are we doing here, do you think, now? We've watched this in Canada. We see it in Sydney, Australia. How are we doing? Uh, I think we're doing as well as we can, but we can't let our guard down. We cannot let our guard down. And that's why, whether it's the NYPD or others who have these active surveillance programs, we have to be very careful. And you have groups like the Civil Liberties Union and the New York Times attacking the police for what they feel is uh, too much activity. The fact is the threat is real. And we have to have sources in those communities. We have to monitor the communities. And so we have to try to stop it before it happens. If it does happen, then you have to make sure that your police are extremely well trained and can adapt to every possible hostage situation, every possible situation like this. Like uh, we saw Mumbai, uh, the attack several years ago, and the NYPD then went into uh, many, many uh, uh, practice routines, drills, where uh, uh, how to. Uh, uh, get people released from a hotel that's under siege, it's, in, you know, it's on fire. Uh, so every possible situation, I can assure you that all of the leading police departments in our country are going to be uh, either going to Sydney or talking to the officials in Sydney to find out exactly what happened here, how it went down, to, to enable us to be better prepared in the event that it happens here, God forbid. Well, uh, Peter King, thank you for your time. Appreciate your input on that out of no, West Babylon you. today. You got it.